hi guys welcome to this video so in this video we are going to see some tutorials for the assembly okay so in my previous um, videos I have not posted anything uh, on the tutorial on how to do assembly like what are all the various tools which are all available in the assembly tools like I don't have enough time for explaining those guys so I'm just posting this video for the entire assembly tutorial okay so here like in this video I will try to cover up everything but if I forgot something I will upload definitely with the part 2 of this assembly tutorial okay so let's get started first of all um, we need to create parts for the assembly right so at first we need to set the working directory so let me just select um, like this DHF folder as my working directory okay so then after selecting the working directory we have to create our parts right so let's click on new and first of all we need to create parts so then only we can able to assemble these parts right so <coughs> let if you want to uh, rename this you can able to rename this like i'm just going to um have this name as part one and then the first main thing is like selecting the working directory and the next thing is selecting this template like if you are going to assemble two or more parts like one or more parts like you need to follow the same template like same unit which you have used for the first part the same unit you have to use in for the second part also okay so if i'm going to select this mms spot solid abs here for the next part also you need to select this same mms spot solid abs okay so then only um, your part can be able to assemble like if you are going to um, create this part based on the mms okay and if you are going to make the second part with the mmks these two parts the dimension will differ okay here if you enter a value of uh, 6 mm like a diameter of a hole for a circle like uh, extruded part here then if you are going to enter the same 6 for the mmks unit means like it will be doubled or tripled like um, it will be like a very very big shape like when compared to the ks okay, mmks so I'm just uh, recommend you guys to follow the same default template like um, either you can use default template for your practice but when you are going to do any kind of project I recommend you guys to follow the MMNS um, part for it ABS okay or realistic okay so let's select the front line let's go for the extrude directly let's go for the sketch view here I don't want to uh, spend more time on here like uh, this is a kind of uh, you know, like just <clears throat> let's go for the palette and six sided excellent let's place it here close so this is just assembly tutorial right so i'm just going to create my own shape here so this will be um, symmetric oops sorry 150 oops this is too big okay 130 okay and let me just check on this inner layer diameter of this this will be 100 okay good so let's save this part and let's close this and let's go for the new again let's create a second part okay so part 2 and click the default template or else like you can use the default template itself like um, while you are doing practice like I said before if you are going to use default template kindly use this for all the parts that you are going to assembly okay so for this I'm just going to draw one more circle Okay, with a diameter of 100 and I just want to um, extrude this to a value of 500 and okay and then extrude on this face okay belt six sided hexagon place it here close and yeah I just want to place this on this axis oops sorry I click on the cancel button close and axis okay sketch view and rotate on resize just want to increase like this okay okay extrude this to a value of 100 okay and I just want to save this part okay good so now we have created two parts right so directly we can go for the assembly itself so let's go for the new and let's go for the assembly and on the assembly itself you can able to rename like uh, this is a um, tutorial for the assembly right so tutorial um, for ASM okay good and 
and we need to unclick the default template like if you are going to follow the default template for those parts while you are while you are creating you can use this same default template for the assembly also but if you are going to if you are selected this mms on that parts you need to unclick this and you have to click ok and then you have to search where the mms is here okay so mms a some design abs like we have selected abs there right so let's click on ok so at first this is the overview like um this is the like a um, ribbon menu which you have found for the assembly like this looks similar when compared to the part modeling also like i think most of the tools are similar like section appearances manage view pattern extrude revolve sketch axis point coordination system plane and regenerate and this is kind of a um, group and this is like a string graph like we will see this on later and then perspective view and some of the important thing here is bill of materials like we will see detailed explanation on this bill of material on a separate video and then this is kind of reference view like this all these tools which are all available is based on investigate okay so we will see some separate separate video for all this model internet and uh, model display is fine like if you have to um, if you are assembled two to three parts you, you can able to have some extruded exploded view right um like uh, yeah let me just explain after from placing these parts in the assembly okay so first of all you can be able to find like assembly right assembly top assembly front but if you are going for the uh, part sketch like you can be able to view only right top front okay so here you can have asm right asm top asm front and asm the coordination system for this okay so this is kind of uh, entire thing for the assembly right so the first thing here is like we need to assemble our part okay here there are over various kind of um, tools which are all available to assemble the part okay so let me just assemble click on assemble so here you can see the part one and the part two so let's assemble this big part first so let, let me just click on open so once you open the part you can be able to see that our part is on purple color and you can see the status is now constraints here okay so we need to like we, you can able to see that this um, color different color bars like orange green and dark blue like you can able to see like i can hold this with my mouse left click and i can be able to move this part like if you click this uh, this circular part we can able to rotate like this and if you are going to um, hold this like we can able to rotate like this and then for the orange like we can able to rotate this or else like you can use this arrow marks like move towards upwards or move towards z axis and move towards x axis okay so like this this works like if you directly click on okay like you can able to see that our part is not constrained here like you can is able to see the small box here okay so you can see there is no constraints here and here on the left you can able to see that two drop down features so okay so the first one is like automatic distance angle offset parallel coincident normal coplanar centered tangent fix and the default so for the first part like if you are going to place any part without any constraints like if you are going to do assembly for over 100 parts on the first part like if you have an axis coincident you can make this as a based on axis or else like if you are going to assemble only two parts i am just recommend you guys to go on with the fix or else like you can go for the uh, default okay so let me just undo and you can able to see the default so this default position is like a first part will be placed somewhere else like with the default position and you can be able to see we have not constrained any kind of plane axis features but you can be able to see that our part is fully constrained and you can be able to see that our part is on fully yellow color once your part is on full fully yellow color you can directly click on ok so that you can you don't have any kind of a, a small box feature here that represents that our part is not fully placed here okay so anyway like we have assembled the first part based on the default constraint so let's go for the next part here so let's go for the assembly and let's select our second part and you can able to see the same purple color is highlighted here and you can see there is no constraints for the second part okay so here let me just explain what are all the uh, assembly constraints that we have to build our part okay so the first one is user defined as you can see here so the user defined is like we need to select the x-axis y-axis and z-axis and we need to place for part exactly like the same okay so as you can see like um i can't able to see the x y and z direction um i, th I think i have switched this off okay so here is it axis x-axis and y-axis so we need to place these three axes perfectly so then we can able to have 
here fully constrained here so for the z axis we have an axis so let's select this axis and let's select this axis and you can able to see this part is got changed whether you need this to be a distance you can adjust this distance by your own like 150 like this uh, the next one is angle offset like if you need to have an angle for this like you can be able to um, adjust this angle by like this and the next thing is parallel whether you want to make this axis and this axis as a parallel feature you can make it like this and the next thing is coincident coincident is like this axis these two axis will get coincident relationship so that it got merged here okay so the next thing is normal like you can able to see like tangent feature like this axis and this axis okay so the next one is coplanar like a <clears throat> it's like a how can i say like a like um like this axis is got, got tangently placed so that we can we can't able to move this part like further here like you can able to see this like we can able to move upward or downward and then like a rotational axis and you can make this like um, like yeah you can able to see this right we can able to move like this like at the center it will be down on the left side like and let me just go for this view so that you will have some better view here so if we move like this okay let me just uh, yeah. and you can see this got high and this got low and it's like a angular feature here okay so this is kind of a coplanar so here i'm just going to use the coincident relationship so we have placed our y direction okay and then this x direction is also got placed because we have used axis feature here right so then you can able to see that our part is rotated and it is moving like this direction so we need to place this exactly on both the x direction and the z direction right so for this we have placed the axis coincident and then we need to select this plane and this plane and you can see this got distance and if, if you else add this coincident or else like you can make it anything okay and you can see this has got fully constrained if you click on okay and you can see that our part has got fully featured here without any small box okay so this is the user defined feature so let me just uh, go for the placement and let me just delete all this okay and you can see that our part is not constrained here and you can see the purple color here we can able to move this part by holding this small circle so the next one is like rigid feature so rigid feature is like we can uh, assemble these two part based on the face feature okay so for this rigid i'm just going to select uh, this face and then this face and you can see that these two got um, placed here so the next thing is i can merge this with an axis okay let me just make this as a coincident and you can be able to see that our part has got placed by the face feature like this face and this face and now we can be able to rotate this part okay so this is how this rigid feature will work and you can see this is kind of partially constrained so we need to place this on the plane also okay i think this constraint is invalid okay now you can be able to see that our part has got a fully constrained with the yellow color like if you click on okay and you can see this box with the highlighted with the center point here so that represents that our part is placed with a y and z axis but it it has some rotational axis like we can be able to um yep okay let me just uh, close this and let me just go for this part again and you can be able to see that our part can be rotated here so this is kind of a rotational axis which has been um, given for this so the drag components like you can be able to drag this like uh, when you place it at a point and you can be able to rotate this part or move this part because we have placed a rigid feature for this right so we can't able to move this part anymore so let's go for the edit and let's go and delete the connections which we have created for this rigid and then the next thing is like pin for the pin like if you have to create any motor mechanism for this part like i have posted already a video for the spin mechanism like uh, with the motor mechanism video okay so you can watch that video if you have to know more about this pin and then a slider and think i think i have already um created a video for the slider so if you want to um, place this on an axis and you can be able to move this okay let me just go for the slider select this axis and select this axis okay and then like we need to select um, this plane and this part plane and you can see this connection definition is got completed but 
this slider mechanism and here also you can be able to see that this is not fully constrained we can able to move this part based on this slider like we have placed an axis right so instead of this slider you can also use this cylinder constraint so both are similar but on the cylinder constraints we can able to place our motor on this part okay so let me just remove this also and let me just delete this side of the slider so let me just move this part like this and the next thing is cylinder so for the cylinder it is very very simple like we can directly select these two axes and you can able to see that our part is fully constrained this requires only the axis constraint or else like if you need to add new constraint you can go for the new set and you can place um, your front plane here like this okay so let me just undo this action and let's click on okay and when you use this cylinder feature here and you can able to see that we can drag our part like this and also we can rotate our part side by side we can rotate and we can drag like this but on the slider we can just able to drag like this we can't able to rotate this part right so this is how the cylinder tool will work so let me just go for this part and let's see what are all the more features which are all available in this part okay so let's um drag it somewhere like this so the next thing is like uh, yeah this planar ball weld bearing um slot feature i think you guys can able to understand what i'm trying to say like this slot feature is for the third features um which you can use to rotate the parts for the slot feature like i have already posted a video for this uh, jack mechanism um and it's a kind of uh, i think like uh, like a two weeks before i have posted a video on um, g clamp i think so yeah on the g clamp itself you can able to find this how this slot mechanism will work okay so i'm really sorry guys like so i can't able to uh, have a perfect model and i can't able to explain everything on a single video like if you have any separate doubts based on this slot mechanism or else any mechanism so that you can comment below i will put post a separate video for the tutorial by creating some separate parts for you okay so general is like similar to the user defined function like you can able to um, select this axis okay and then you can able to select this plane okay and then if you have to select um, this plane front plane you can also select this oops sorry yeah and you can able to see that our part is got created here okay so this is how this tool will work okay this general tool will work and yeah i think you guys can have an idea of this uh, motor mechanism like i don't know whether you guys have an idea or not like i already i have posted a video on the motor mechanism but if you don't watch that video kindly go and watch or else like i'll show you like how this pin mechanism will work for the pin like we need to select axis coincidence first okay so after placing the axis coincident i just want to place the plane coincident like this and then connection definition is got completed and then we can click on okay and here you can able to see the box with a small dot so that, that represents that our part can be able to rotate you can either go for the drag components and you can drag our part like this okay so for the motor like we have used pin mechanism here right so if you directly go for the applications if you go for the mechanism you can able to see the small orange color here that represents that we have created this two joint based on the pin mechanism so you can directly go for the servo motors um and you can place your motor here so i will put some separate video for the servo motor like i have already posted a video for motor mechanism so you can go and check how this motor mechanism will work okay so that's all guys like we will see um more and more assembly tutorials like uh, on the next week or else like uh, on the next upcoming days i will post a separate video for you to have an entire overview on the interface of this assembly tutorial okay so thank you guys like thanks for watching and if you want more videos related to you or uh, any kind of mechanical engineering tutorials you can comment below or else like if you need to have any tutorial video based on any kind of new software you can comment below so that i will upload videos based on that okay so thank you guys like we will see next video until then bye